Last month, I attempted to make a graphics engine in Scratch, and let's just say I got completely roasted in the comments. Yeah. So today I will try that again, but instead of graphics, I will try to simulate actual physics. What have I got myself into? Alright, so the last project embarrassingly took me like days to make. So, this time I will only give myself one hour. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so I think the first step would be to create gravity. I mean, it's like a staple feature needed. So let's create a basic square to begin with. Um, this is close enough to a square, right? Oh wait, let's make it cool. Yeah. Now creating gravity is easy, it's literally just a downward force. See, here you go, it works, told you it was easy. Wait, how long has it been? 10 minutes. Alright, let's recap how this works. I created a variable called gravity force. I start by setting it to zero, and then in a forever loop we check if we are not touching the ground. AKA, are we in the air? If that's the case, I decrease the gravity force value, and use that to set the object's y position. Otherwise, I just set it to zero. And well, gravity exists. Only issue, we have 50 minutes left, and I have an entire list of things I want to add to this project. Stage 2 is adding acceleration and friction. Also, by the way, click that subscription button guys, because at 100,000 subscribers I will be doing a 24 hour livestream. Thanks. Anyways, acceleration, what is it? Well, it's when you have your object like this Hagrid Funko, um, and basically start moving it slowly, but it gets quicker over time. It's more or less that. Don't quote me though. And friction is basically when we take this fella again, but force his head into the desk and then move it. So it's like a force resisting that movement. Like, it makes it harder to move. <laughs> I need to change my priorities, I should not be sat here doing this. Okay, let's add this stuff in. So let's create some variables, speed, acceleration, and friction. I'll give them some base values, so speed will start at 0, acceleration can be like 0.5, and friction much lower. Yeah, that seems good. So now to make a move, let's detect me pressing some keys. If it's the right key, let's change the speed by acceleration, and the left we just inverse it, so multiply by minus 1. So that's acceleration working. Oh, wait, I forgot, I need to actually change Qbert's x position. Yeah, there we go, epic. I mean, it's quite slippery and it never slows down, so um, let's add some friction. So for friction, let's start by checking if we aren't pressing anything. And then if our speed is above zero, we'll just change the speed by the inverse of the friction. Otherwise, we'll just do the opposite. So now when I hold the left or right arrow, you can see he kind of slides around. I can tweak the values though to make it more or less slippery. Hey, if you've ever wanted to professionally make games and publish them to Steam or other platforms, then I recommend today's sponsor, Game Maker. Okay, so I'm going to try and create a game in Game Maker in just one minute while I talk to you about it. Game Maker is a friendly game engine for both beginner and advanced users. It can be used to make cross-platform games for desktop, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo and more. Alright, let's make something scary. It has been used to make successful games such as Undertale, Hotline Miami and Hyper Light Drifter. Game Maker also has no level of entry, meaning that anyone can get started making games. Um, this is literally my paralysis demon. Something I really like is that everything you need to make games is right in the engine. You won't ever need any third party software. This includes having the ability to create sprites, make animations and edit scripts, all within Game Maker. Let's make this creature just like randomly appear, between 2 seconds and like 300 hours. You don't even have to write a line of code if you don't want to, as Game Maker lets you also make logic with drag and drop. Okay, that's unreasonable, I changed it to like a minute. And if you ever get stuck, then don't worry, because Game Maker has a ton of tutorials, videos and other resources waiting to rescue you from any tricky situation. Plus, there is a massive community behind Game Maker that can be found on their forum, Discord and even subreddit, where you can chat with other fellow Game Maker users. Okay, so let's just uh, sit here and wait to be scared. Oh, wow, scary. <laughs> okay. You can try Game Maker for free right now by clicking the link in the description below. Now let's continue. Okay, with just around 40 minutes remaining, let's add collisions. So collisions are made up of two parts. Firstly, detecting the actual collisions. So for that, we can use this sensing module. Specifically this node that lets us literally check if we are colliding with anything. 
Oh, I guess that's uh, pretty easy. In my other project, like the OpenGL physics engine, it required a whole new class and around 100 lines of code. But I guess in Scratch it's literally just one little thing. The second part of collisions is collision resolution, aka what happens when said thing collides with another thing. In real life, if I for instance throw my guitar into the bathtub, it stops. And that's an example of collision resolution. So let's start by adding the resolution of the object just stopping. This is pretty easy, just check if we are touching a wall. Oh, by the way, I created this wall sprite. And if so, set our speed to zero. And then we offset the X position so that we are not inside of the wall. And um, here we go, we are now blocked, we can't go past it. We can add another type of collision resolution, where we bounce away from the wall. It's literally the same thing, but instead of setting the speed to zero, we set it to the inverse of the speed. I know, it sounds a little bit odd, but it basically means we bounce back. And um, yeah, here you go, we are now bouncing back. It's uh, pretty strong though. Embarrassingly, that took 15 minutes, so we have like 13 minutes or so left. Um, so let's try and add thrust. This is pretty similar to our gravity code, except we want to apply force upwards to the player. So let's make a new variable called thrust. Let's set it to like 1 to begin with. Then we need to check for some input, so I'll just use space. We also need to change the y position by the thrust so that our cube, you know, actually moves. Alright, let's test it out. Okay, yeah, I mean, it works. But what if we uh, amp the thrust up a little bit? Whoa, okay. Um, so it seems like there is a Y limit in Scratch, but I still think this is pretty good. Guys, I have to be honest. I spent like another six minutes adding this rocket boost sprite when you press space. So we only have like five minutes left. But it's cute. Okay, okay. I think the last thing we can do is make Cuba super bouncy. So let's create a level that will keep it trapped. Then we can just yoink the bounty code from the collisions and make it bounce away from the level. I will also make it so that it starts with some sort of speed. And that is time. So, um, guys, um, here is what I made. And it's kind of cool, but sad at the same time. <laughs> and well, that completes the challenge. Is it a physics engine? Hell no. But whatever it is, it's the best thing I can do in an hour. <laughs> However, if you've enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, subscribe, and comment, I don't know, muffin. Also, check out Game Maker if you want to start making games today for free. It will be the first link in the description below. Bye!